Hi guys, thanks for joining Gino's Grooming Channel. Today is another episode of our vlog where we discuss grooming industry subjects for aspiring groomers or for people who just want to be in the know. So welcome. Today's subject is going to be on grooming preparation for your pet before they go into surgery. And the reason why I'm going to be talking about this today is a very personal reason. Our standard poodle, Rosie, uh, who is turning 11 this year, is uh, currently in post-op. She had her toe amputated today. So I wanted to kind of talk to you guys about the journey that I have gone through with Rosie um, and also the grooming considerations that is involved before you go ahead and plan on a surgery for your dog. So let's go ahead. Let me introduce you to Rosie and tell you about what happened to her in the last few months. Okay, so Rosie is a beautiful 10-year-old black standard poodle. I have had her for about nine years, so um, I adopted her from the show circuit. She was a little nippy with the judges, but she's a very, very sweet girl, and I was very fortunate uh, to have her in my life. Um, so in our life together, just a few months ago, I noticed that she was lifting up her paw, and um, it was her left paw, and I hang out with a group of friends, and in the group of friends that I have, there's a lot of medical professionals, vet techs, RVTs, and, you know, kind of, everyone kind of took a look at her foot and said, you know, probably soft tissue damage, she's just lifting, it seems like there's no pain when there's pressure applied, but something is going wrong, she's definitely favoring her foot. So um, we went ahead and carried her up and down stairs, made sure that we treated that for a soft tissue damage, which is just make sure that you don't put any pressure on that foot, um, that she doesn't play with her little brother, uh, things like that to make sure that her foot can go ahead and have a chance to heal. So it did seem to get better, um, I will admit, and we were very happy that it seemed like Rosie just had a little bit of soft tissue, everything is fine, we did the right things. But then another month passed and she started growing out a really strange nail. It was kind of this wonky nail. I know that's not the medical term for it, but it just didn't look right. So all of her nails always have been very beautiful. Um, and this one kind of was just growing out. Um, so got a little concerned. So went ahead and took her to the vet. She was also licking it a lot, showing that she, it was bothering her. So went ahead, saw our regular vet, who is a fantastic vet. And um, he went ahead, took a look and said, you know what, it could be something worse, but let's go ahead and treat it as a broken nail. So I didn't think that was going to be too bad, just waiting for this nail to fall off. Once in a while it would get bloody, there, I'd have to clean up blood. You can see there was a split, uh, just really nasty. You could actually see the vein and the nerve underneath her nail. So I know that's why she was licking it. And you saw inflammation. And I just made sure to cover her paw uh, with a little sock um, and with a little bandage to make sure that she didn't over lick it so that this nail could fall off. So a month goes by, this nail is not falling off, but in fact, the toe is getting worse. It is now getting really inflamed. She's licking it pretty much incessantly. She's such a good girl. I would tell her, Rosie, please don't lick it so much. And she'd kind of look at me and okay, and put her head down. And then a few minutes later, you see she'd start licking her little paw again. So it was really bothering her. Again, I kept putting little socks on there, um, little gym socks and bandaging them up uh, to not cause a hot spot, not to cause a sore, but definitely could see that things were progressing for the worse and the inflammation was getting bigger. So one of my really good friends is an RVT. She came over and took a look and said, Gina, okay, there's two things that it can be. It's either a growth in the toe or it's in an infection of some kind. Um, so it was definitely back off to the vet. We go, um, and this was just a few days ago, uh, went ahead and got Rosie examined. And definitely at this time, we took some extra measures to go ahead and check the toe. So what was done is an x-ray of her foot was taken and when they took me into the room uh, to go ahead and take a look at the x-ray, you definitely saw there was a mass around the bone. Now, not knowing whether or not it is cancerous um, and not knowing whether it might be a bone infection um, without taking a biopsy, we don't know. But when it comes to toes, it's kind of like one of these things that if you take the biopsy, send it off, it's already, you have to, you know, take a big chunk of that toe um, to send it off to see if it's cancerous. You kind of just might as well just take the toe. So at this point, we just decided we're going to go ahead, take the toe off, and then the toe gets sent for a biopsy and we find out if there is cancerous cells in there or not, or if it's a bone infection or maybe other, who knows? So the scariest part about this ordeal, of course, you know, a toe, and I was kind of 
smiling about it for a 10 year old standard poodle. Hey, you know, uh, getting a toe amputated is probably not the worst thing that could happen, of course. And working for a veterinary company for so long, I definitely have seen a lot worse things happen. So I was very thankful for that. But there was a big concern. And the veterinary team that was working with Rosie, uh, they gave me a call earlier this week before the surgery and said, Gina, we really should take an x-ray of Rosie's chest. Um, because if the cancer spread, there really is no point to amputate this toe, to go through all of that pain and suffering for her, to go through the cost uh, for me, um, if there is now going to be a quality of life question. So if there was cancer visible in her chest, in her lungs, I would have gotten a call this morning saying, okay, surgery is off. Now the conversation becomes very different. And uh, that was really, really hard. Um, luckily, sorry, I'm just thinking about it. Luckily, uh, x-rays came back clear. So, um, that still doesn't mean that we're out of the woods, uh, because the biopsy can come back. Well, it's, I guess, a necropsy. They're actually sending the entire toe, um, can come back that there are cancerous cells in her toe, which means that we may, you know, start searching for cancer in other places. Um, but it could also be a bone infection. Um, and like I said, other. So we're going to go ahead and find that out. But um, thank goodness that uh, it doesn't look like she has any obvious cancer in her chest or her lungs. Um, so now she has her toe amputated um, and we're going to be picking her up in a few hours. And then it's the convalescence of uh, making sure that she heals well and to keep her away from her annoying little brother who likes to bark at everything and rile her up. So we have a little challenge ahead of us during her convalescence, um, but happy to have removed this obviously annoying and irritating and possibly painful thing from her foot so that she can continue her life in a happy way. So that's our Rosie story, um, and I'll keep you guys updated if you're interested um, in how she does with her recovery. But with all this being said, there is a grooming consideration when dealing with surgery, so pre-surgery. So not every dog has the opportunity or the need to go to the groomer before surgery. But if you do have the opportunity and you have a dog that has, let's say, a single coat, that that coat keeps growing and can mat up, you have to consider that you may want to go ahead and have your dog groomed before surgery. Um, now, why would we do this? Why would we put our dogs through that? Um, is because if we take their coats short and we give them the sanitary trim, we trim their nails, we go ahead, clean their ears, we keep their uh, ears short, everything short, short, muzzle short. Now they can convalesce without us having to fuss and brush them every day and keep their coat maintained. At this point, it's their health. So we don't, we want to go ahead and put vanity aside. This is a humanity over vanity channel. And Rosie, who was a show dog and this magnificent, beautiful dog and still is, I went ahead and chopped that tree down. And I did a really quick job. Um, I went ahead and just shaved her all the way through uh, with a number four, um, took her top knot uh, down very, very low and her ears down very low. The only thing I kept for my own, not vanity, it was almost more for superstition, is that I was growing Rosie's tail out uh, to do a segment for training people how to do a poodle tail and how to trim a poodle tail. Uh, so this morning before we had the results of Rosie's chest x-ray, um, I had made sure that I left her tail natural because as she convalesces and gets better, um, I'm going to go ahead and trim that tail for you um, because I know that she's going to be better and she's going to be happy to be our grooming channel model uh, with her poodle beautifulness. Okay, some considerations for grooming. You can't obviously groom every dog. So for aspiring groomers, um, <clears throat> one of the rules of thumbs that I had at VCA, uh, which is Veterinary Centers of America, where I worked as a grooming manager for 10 years, we had a lot of our policies and practices they would go ahead and trickle down from the veterinary um, support staff and the veterinarians that work for that company. So the rule of thumb is that you don't want to bathe a dog with an open sore unless you have veterinary approval. So if your dog or you have a dog come in with an open sore, um, that is something that you want to go ahead and back off, not uh, bathe a dog um, without veterinary approval because there's some liability involved with that. You don't want to be, as a groomer, the one responsible for 
causing worse infection with a product that you use or a product that someone else is using um, out there. Now that's, I know kind of a long shot to have that happen, but you wanna make sure that your liability is clean. But if a veterinarian says, go ahead and wash this dog, go ahead and do that. What I suggest is always don't put any forceful water if there is an open sore. And if there are stitches, you don't wanna use again any, um, and with stitches also you need veterinary approval to do that, but you don't wanna put any force drying onto stitches. You wanna go ahead and bust those stitches open. So know that if you have open sores, um, small abrasions are usually okay, but open sores get veterinary approval before you go ahead and put them in the bath. Now for uh, pet lovers who are preparing to have their dog uh, go into surgery, go short. Um, again, if you have a double coated breed, they're gonna be fine. Just make sure that you brush them out before they go into surgery. Uh, make sure as much as you can, obviously, depending on what they're going for into for surgery, um, but make sure that that coat doesn't get stuck. You, we wanna make sure that it's open um, so that you have a few weeks to convalesce while the dog is resting and getting better. For short-coated breeds, the considerations you wanna do is, obviously, you want their nails done, you want their ears cleaned, uh, so that you don't get, go ahead and fuss with them in between um, the time that they are getting better and recovering. Uh, but for single-coated breeds, uh, drop-coated breeds, uh, long breeds, you may want to consider shaving your pet completely. Now for puppies, you can usually get away with not shaving your puppy. So if you're going in for a spay or neuter or for any puppy surgeries, usually I see that clients can get away without going ahead and shaving their puppies. So good news for you puppy owners who are watching this saying, oh no, I'm getting my dog neutered. I don't want to shave them and they're in their cute puppy coat, usually you can do okay, but make sure you brush that coat before surgery. Um, but I will tell you this, there is a percentage of puppies that do get matted while they convalesce uh, for their puppy surgeries. So know what kind of coat you're working with. Um, know if your pet can uh, be brushed out before, that is the best way to go. But know if your coat does get matted, even if they're a puppy, you may wanna go ahead and make a quick call to your groomer, get on your groomer's schedule and go ahead and shave it off. Now, one of the things that I did with Rosie when I shaved her, because she is favoring her paw, I did not want her on the table for too long. And you can tell your groomer, or if you're an aspiring groomer, talk to your clients and communicate with them and let them know, listen, this is gonna be a really quick and dirty shave. I'm gonna go ahead and just shave your dog all over. If allowable, if there's no open sores, go ahead, get them in the bath, make sure that they're clean, do the sanitary, do their paw pads, do everything you need to do, nails and ears, make sure that they're good for the next month so that while they're lying down, they don't create mats. Your dog might get an Elizabethan collar, AKA cone of shame uh, for a few weeks so that they don't lick sutures or stitches. So be aware that that collar can cause matting around the throat and neck. I see a lot of dogs if they don't get sh cut short or shaved before surgery they come in a month later six weeks later after they've healed and I have to shave them anyway so I will tell you that is a really good way to get your dog clean first off also keep their coat short and manageable so that they can go ahead and recover pain-free so you don't have to fuss with them and then after that your dog can have a peaceful restful time getting better feeling clean, feeling good, and making sure that their coat does not get matted during this time. Well, okay, guys, that is it. Thank you for joining me on this very personal journey. I'm not sure if any of you guys are going through this right now. Um, and if you are, know that you have a kindred spirit in me. Uh, it is really tough when our beloved pets have to go through things like this, um, but it is obviously for their better health. Uh, we have to do this. We have to do what's right for them at all times. And then we have to see them through uh, their convalescence and their recovery. Guys, thanks so much. I'll be posting updates on Rosie's recovery. Um, thanks so much for watching. If this content you like, uh, thanks for clicking that thumbs up button. Subscribe for more like it. We will see you next time and really appreciate your time.